Hello darlings, welcome back. For this week's video, I decided to make my very own vintage style upholstered bed head. A few years ago when I watched Mad Men for the first time, I fell in love with Betty and Don's bedroom. It was so gorgeous and the thing that really made it perfect was their upholstered tufted bed head. I just thought that was such a statement piece and it really, really made their room so gorgeous and very mid-century. I had no idea what color I wanted this bed head to be, but I had a couple of inspiration pictures that I found on Pinterest for the style that I wanted to go for. It wasn't gonna be exactly the same as Betty's bed. I wanted to have that lovely, gentle, sweeping shape that a lot of the beds had in the 50s and 60s. And of course I had no idea how to make my own bed head. So I did a bit of research and I found quite a few helpful videos which suggested having half inch plywood then putting two layers of mattress foam on top and then covering the top with batting, which was exactly what I did. I started by creating a template for the headboard. I laid out newspaper and taped it together, which I folded in half to hopefully evenly replicate the curve on both sides. I drew the simple design freehand and cut it out, resulting in a gentle curved and classic style bed shape. I stuck it onto the wall behind the bed to get an idea of the height and how it looked in our room. I can totally see it. It's gonna be so cute. I feel like this will just make the whole room so luxurious and so lovely. It will give it an instant vintage feel. We picked up half an inch plywood from the hardware store and the next day I got started on laying out the template for the headboard. Once I was happy with it, I drew the design onto the wood ready to be cut. James cut the plywood with the jigsaw very carefully going around the curved edges. We don't have a saw horse so our garden bed managed to help us get the job done. Ta-da! I'm so happy with the finished result. I'm pretty sure it's even on both sides. Even if it isn't, it doesn't matter because we're going to be putting some foam on the top and that can help soften the edges if it is not quite perfect. I bought two foam mattress pads from Target. I bought two because I feel like it makes it a little bit more luxurious having extra padding on the bed head. I'm gonna cut the foam to the same size as the bed head and then I need to get my hands on some cotton batting or wadding I think it's called and that's what we're gonna stretch over the top and then staple that all into place. And I'm yet to choose my material, so we'll probably go to the fabric store tomorrow and pick out the perfect, beautiful material to go on our gorgeous new vintage bed head. This is it, we're saying goodbye to the bed. Goodbye old bed frame. I can't wait for the new one. I found a great bed base on Facebook Marketplace that will be replacing our old bed. This wooden bed here wasn't actually put together right. The timber slats were too short which meant the slats would fall out from beneath the mattress. And the supporting beam down the middle was installed upside down. And we'd also been storing a double bed mattress underneath and unfortunately the beam had really been squishing it. Oh, oh no! <laughs> That's terrible! I think we might have ruined it. This is what happens when a good 1950s housewife doesn't clean. James! Oh! 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 We picked up the bed base, which was deceivingly heavy for what it was, and after lots of heaving and pushing, got it inside. Let me hold the back then. I'm holding it a little bit. Go. Wait. Yeah. Oh, you're so strong. God, I'm pathetic in comparison. When we were loading the mattress into the van, we actually ripped it on top, which thankfully was an easy fix and didn't matter as it would be covered by the mattress. Mm -hmm. 
I gently sanded off the rough edges on the plywood to prepare it for laying the foam, batting and fabric without causing an accidental rip. I pulled the cotton batting tight over the foam and stapled it in place. I ended up picking a mottled blue fabric that afternoon from the fabric store that seemed reminiscent of the Mad Men bed. I was very precise with stapling the corners, making sure to get the cleanest edge. Sorry for the sound in the background, I've got a load of washing on at the moment. But I'm excited to keep going with the headboard. It looks a little bit modern at the moment because I haven't put any of my details, I haven't put any buttons on or anything, but I'm really excited to keep going with this. I've only pulled tight and stapled the very top of the headboard, so I'm just gonna keep going and staple around and pull it all tight and then go in and measure out exactly where I want my buttons to go. Something that scares me a little bit is if I get my measurements incorrect and it's on a slight slant, the buttons are gonna look really, really silly if they're just all going down to one side. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time to make sure that I get all of that perfect before I then go in and staple in and then put my buttons on top. Hopefully it's gonna work out and I'm gonna get that all done today. A couple of days ago, I ordered a bed skirt or a balance off Amazon. So that's just arrived this morning. It's a lovely ruffled eyelet bed skirt, which I'm excited to cover up all of that bed base because it's not pretty to look at. A bed skirt is very much a vintage look and it's something that a lot of the vintage women used on their beds. It automatically makes a bed look feminine and elegant. I finished stapling down the rest of the fabric and started measuring where I would place the buttons. I measured the centre first and worked out from there. I'm using these simple plastic buttons, which are perfect for this project as they will be covered anyway. I found it a bit difficult to get the right measurements working on a curved piece, so I laid out the buttons by eye and roughly spaced them. I spent at least two to three hours playing around with the button placement, and for some reason, every time I took a measurement, it managed to change when I came back to measure it again. How do they keep changing? <laughs> Finally, I was happy with the placement and marked the fabric. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of terrified to go through and staple it all together. I've tried to measure out everything and I hope it's even. I've done a lot of playing it by eye to see whether it's level because it's just so difficult with all the different corners and then padding can be a little bit more bulky on one side so the measurement's not gonna be the same on that side as it is on this side. So, uh, I don't know, um, I've laid it out. I've dotted everything and I'm gonna go in with the staple gun now. Fingers crossed this is not going to be a catastrophe and it's gonna be even and let's just hope it goes well. I'm very terrified but I've got to move on to this next step otherwise I'm never gonna complete the bed head. All right let's do it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. Oh, it looks so good. Oh yeah, heck yeah, baby. Oh, get out. This is the Mad Men bed of my dreams. I had to put all my weight into the staple gun in order for the staple to grip deep into the wood because when I didn't give it my all, the staples would just bounce straight out. I've never sweat so much before in my life. Oh my gosh. A staple broke off, so there's a part of it in there that's just loose in the fabric. Hopefully we'll never poke us in the head. It's hard, I'm so sweaty. You have to push all of your weight into the back to make sure that it goes down to reach the, the timber through here. I'm gonna keep going with this and fix up some of my dodgy staples. It looks insane, I'm so happy with this. I've got this dodgy one here where I put like three or four staples in it and one of them bent out so I'm gonna try and pull this one out 
but otherwise I've got a lot of nice neat ones like this but some of them are a little bit messy but it still works as long as it's holding down the material I think I think we'll be okay so yeah I'm gonna cover my buttons now and then put it all together so exciting I spent that night drawing out 29 button sized pieces of fabric and hand sewed as many as I could before going to bed. I did a large gathering stitch around the little circle and placed the button inside, pulling the thread tight to gather it and did a couple of stitches to secure it in the back. The next morning, I sat down to hand sew more buttons whilst watching my favourite TV show. Just like my Aunt Agnes always says, it's better to get a rose from a casual friend than to get a can of succotash from... All my buttons are finally done. I think I've got about 29 now. I'm going to be securing the buttons on with a bit of Gorilla Glue, which is meant to be good to use with fabric. I also need to kind of press down the buttons, but I'm obviously not going to have enough fingers to press down all of the buttons. So I've taken some of my spice jars out and hopefully that will do the job and press that button down and secure it into place. We decided to use these interlocking hooks to attach the headboard to the wall. We also made sure that the hooks we chose held the 10 kilo weight of the headboard. We gradually slid the bed head down the wall, hoping it would hook onto the brackets. <gasps> I thought that might happen. I thought that as well. The staples in the back serrated down the wall, which left a horrible mark. The headboard was so close to the wall, even the hooks couldn't properly slide in, as the bulk from the fabric prevented it. So we decided to attach a piece of timber that the hooks would go on, hopefully making it much easier to see and slide the headboard into position. This is the moment of truth, isn't it? Now look. It's oh, in oh, there it is. <gasps> all the old vintage beds don't actually have the double pillows like that they only have a single pillow it's just the sleeping pillow and then they wrap the the blanket over the top of it so this is not actually period accurate so we need a we need to get another <laughs> we get another duna cover to smooth over the top of one pillow I absolutely adore our new vintage style bed now. It's gorgeous, it looks really expensive. And now that I've chosen that blue color, I feel like everything else in the room doesn't quite go anymore, which maybe means doing some sort of makeover to the room to really tie in all of those colors. Because at the moment, I think the blue is overpowering the rest of the room. Um, so I feel like we need to combine some more dark colors in there to really make it blend and harmonize together but I couldn't be happier with the result of the bed head. It looks so professional. I had lots of fun doing this project. I feel like I have so much more confidence with my DIY skills now. Let me know if you've done a project like this or are thinking about doing something similar in the future. I had so much fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, oh, excuse me. I had the mad med. Mad med. Oh my gosh, mad men! A headboard, um, headboard, bedhead, bedhead. <laughs> um. Oh, oh, oh!
No, I'm even by myself. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, James, the, the, the light above. The light. Oh, the light, the light, the light, the light. I'm not going to hit the light. I feel like I'm going to hit the light. Oh my gosh, are you alright? Yeah. I'm pushing. James, Push. I'm pushing. You're not even helping. <laughs> wait, wait. So you're using your legs. Am I? So my legs are so short though. Keep rolling on. I'm just blabbering and blabbering and blabbering. Whisper. 